Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where I'll show you how to automate stock commentary in a report in Excel. In our example, we have the fictitious returns of the Microsoft, Netflix, and JP Morgan stocks in the month of February. Taking Microsoft as an example, we're saying here that if we invested $100 at the start of the month, we would have 99.41 left at the end of the month, therefore we would have lost money. What we want to do in this video is create some commentary about how these stocks performed throughout February, however do this in an automated instead of manual way. This will be especially useful if you're in a role where you have to do reporting or write monthly commentaries and want to speed this up. There are three main things we want to convey in our commentary. Which stock ranked first, second and third relative to the others. How they traded throughout the month, whether positively, negatively or sideways. And whether they finished on a positive or negative. To convey this, we need to extract the end of month figure, rank them based on this, and also identify the percentage of the month that was positive. To extract the end of month figure, we first need to identify how many days there were in the month. In our example, we're considering February. However, we want to make this flexible for months that have more than 28 days as well. We can use the count A formula to do this, counting the number of occurrences in column A and subtracting this by 1 to ignore the heading. Therefore there were 28 occurrences in the month. We can now use the index function to identify the end of month figure. We type equals index, first type the range. Since we're first looking at Microsoft, this will be in column B followed by the row number. The final value is in row 29, so it's 28, which is the number of occurrences, plus one, as we're adding back the heading. And finally, the column. We can simply type one here, as we want to extract the value in cell B29. We can add absolute references to K1 to ensure that this remains static as we drag this across to identify the end of month for the other stocks as well. As you can see, this corresponds to the values in cells B29 to D29. Now we can identify how they ranked compared to each other. We type equals rank, first enter the end of month figure, followed by the range, and once again, here we'll add absolute references to ensure that this remains static. We can then close brackets and drag this formula across. As you can see, JP Morgan is ranked first as its end of month was highest, while Microsoft is ranked third as its end of month is lowest. Finally, we can calculate the percentage of returns that were positive during the month. To do this, we can use the COUNTIF function. We're counting the amount of values that were greater than 100 within column B. So we first type column B and then we add the criterion. We then divide this by the number of occurrences. Once again here, we'll add absolute references and then we'll drag this across. We want our commentary to be in order of ranking. To help prepare for writing the commentary, we're therefore going to assign the top ranking stock to the top row and the lower ranking stock to the third row. The exact reason behind doing this will become clearer later on. Here we can use an if statement. If F6, in other words a rank of 1, equals G2 
in other words, Microsoft's rank. Then we want it to show the Microsoft ticker. If not, then we want to leave it blank. Once again, we'll add absolute references before dragging this across and down. Therefore, it's showing JP Morgan in the top row as it's ranked first, Netflix in the second row as it's ranked second, and Microsoft in the third row as it's ranked third. We're also going to use the HLOOKUP function to extract the corresponding end of month and percentage positive values. We type equals HLOOKUP. We're looking up the rank within the table we created earlier and since we're first looking for the end of month we type 2 as this is in the second row within the range and finally type false as we want an exact match. We can add absolute references again to the range to ensure that this remains static and then we can drag this down. Now we can adjust this formula slightly to extract the percentage positive. Instead of a 2, we'll simply use a 3 as the percentage positive is in the third row. We can then drag this down as well. Therefore what we have done is simply reformat the data we had in the top table in a different way to make it easier to work with. Before we start automating our commentary, we're going to do one more thing, which is extract the name of the month. To do this, we can use the text function and select one of the dates in column A and type four M's afterwards. What this does is it returns the full name of the month. We'll refer regularly to February in our commentary, so extracting this separately will save us work further down the line. Now we can start with our commentary. As mentioned at the start, we want to inform our reader about three main things. The rank, the direction of trading during the month, and the return at the end of the month. We'll start by typing in followed by the name of the month, and then we'll use an ampersand to identify what the best performing stock was. Here we can use the concat or concatenate function to retrieve the top ranking stock like this. When we click enter, it says, in February, the best performing stock was JP Morgan. Next, let's inform about the direction of trading. So we'll type which traded, and then we'll use an if statement to decide how we'll phrase the statement. If the percentage of the month that was positive is above 60%, then we'll say it traded positively throughout the month. If the percentage of the month that was positive is below 40%, then we'll say it traded negatively throughout the month. And if it's between 40 and 60%, we'll say it traded sideways throughout the month. So we're now showing which stock was the best performing and also how it traded throughout the month. Next, let's consider how it finished. If the end of month figure of the top performing stock is above 100, 
then we'll say something along the lines of it managed to finish above the line at month ends. Whereas if it was below 100, so if this condition does not hold, then we'll say it was struggling towards the end of the month and that it wasn't able to finish above the line. Next, let's talk about the second best performing stock. This time, I'll simply talk you through the formula as it's quite similar in structure to the first one. We'll start by using the concat function again to identify Netflix and then we'll use the same condition as we did before to demonstrate how it traded throughout the month. We'll then inform the reader that it closed behind JP Morgan and once again we can use the concatenate function here. And finally we finish by informing whether it finished above the line or below the line. Finally, let's consider the poorest performing stock. Here we're using concat to identify that Microsoft was the poorest among the three stocks in February. And then we're simply conveying whether it finished above the line or below the line using the same condition as before. Now that the three individual components are complete, we can combine these together to form a paragraph. In the next sheet, I've created a chart to show the stock returns in February and have a section below it dedicated to the commentary. Here we can once again use the concat function to combine the three statements. So it says, in February, the best performing stock was JP Morgan, which traded sideways throughout the month, managing to finish above the line at month end. Netflix demonstrated positive performance throughout the month, closing behind JP Morgan, yet managed to outperform at month end. Finally, Microsoft was the poorest among the three stocks in the month of February, weighing on performance at month end. It sounds quite well structured and provides a good starting point to start your commentary. Let's now try to change the values and see how it impacts the commentary. Microsoft is currently the worst performing. If we change it to the best performing like this, let's see how it impacts the commentary. As you can see, it has adjusted well and matches the picture shown in the chart. Since Microsoft was the best performing stock, we're mentioning this in the first sentence and then mentioning that it traded positively throughout the month, managing to finish above the line at month ends, which is consistent with the charts. Since we didn't change the figures for JP Morgan or Netflix, JP Morgan remains in front of Netflix. This brings us to the end of this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to the Excel Hub for weekly Excel tutorials, techniques and examples.